Not even question specifically for Mr. Morris. Let him know, or let me know, and I can let him know. Once in a while, I'll do running, but most of my stuff I'm taking pictures of products of people. Okay. See if this shows up on the camera. Can you guys see his bubble photo? Can you see how the swirls are changing on that? He got the up close. And so, one of the things that made the colors more visible is having that black background in the lighting setup he has. Um, Gabe and Josh did a handmade setup, not as fancy as this one, but um, I asked them to put together a tutorial in case any of you want to do that for your bubble photography. I'm going to extend the deadline for that bubble photography one just because the air just cleared up and I want to make sure that you all have time. Since there was some rain today, um, sometimes the humidity in the air makes the bubbles stay longer. So when you're doing photography, I'm also going to repost the um, the collection of videos of like why bubbles have different colors and some of those choices between like portrait photography. Anything that you want to speak to them specifically? So the questions that we were talking about here today, um, you're starting with this strobe up here produces sun, just like sunlight. It's just white light that's exactly like sunlight. And when we take a picture of it, the bubble, something translates the light, some mechanism, some principle translates the light coming down here into the camera so that you get these incredible colors. Why is it doing this? And then the other question was, when, it, when you first start the bubble, you get these myriads of colors. And the longer you take the colors, it goes from reds and oranges and yellows, more to violets to blues. And eventually, if you keep doing it, there won't be any color at all. It'll just be perfectly clear, and then it's going to pop. Um, why why did it do that? And then the, the, the trick question here, was if you look at the entire setup, what was, what are all the, what are all the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that I'm using here? So we definitely have light, but there's something else that I'm using today. And uh, if you know what it is, the bonus question. Yeah, can you shout it out if you have any idea of what else? I want you to show how you the bubble with a pipette in there. Uh, Mr. Yes. What is that blue substance in that white container? The blue stuff is, oops, let me get it so you can see it. There we go. Of <laughs> Gabe said it's a concoction of weird liquids. So he's showing you how he's tipping the pipette to the side and then filling that bubble solution with air so it creates a bubble. I'll turn down this way so you can see it better. Um, so putting it in a container like that with some of the bubble solution and then using something to help push it along decreases the chance that the bubble will pop and you can put it in position for being able to take a photo. If you're at home and you want to have like a black background, you could use fabric, you can use a t-shirt even if it's a narrower position. But now Mr. Morris is getting in position behind his camera on the tripod. If you're using your computer or a cell phone, there are different ways that you can prop it up. Let me see if I can come in a little closer here. I might try and get my cell phone. Oh, Maybe. I can I'm see the colors now. Oh, you can see it now? Let me see if I can get closer here. Um, Gabe is from the side and he's blowing air across it to make the colors swirl. Are you able to see the movement yeah, colors? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. And like each time, he, um, Mr. Morris takes a picture, it just gets more colorful, like for me, from the computer. I'm glad you can see that. My view is so tiny in the bottom corner because I can see all of you bigger. So it's a little bit hard to see. I'm going to move to the other side. Oops, sorry. So you can see what he's doing. So what I was starting to say is that you can um, do another setup at home if you want to try this kind of up-close bubble photography. And Gabe and Josh were doing it with their cell phones. So cool. Look at this one. Oh, we've got a good one here. Oops, sorry. Oh, that's I just, incredible. 
bumped Mr. Morse with my computer, but look at that. It almost oh. looks like it's another planet. Yeah, it kind of looks like a colorful Earth. There it is. Big clouds. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the butt bull documentary where it says you could see those patterns when you're looking at weather patterns and clouds on the Earth? Oh, and yeah. And movement? they said, they also said that the bubble kind of represents the, like, Jupiter's storms. Yeah, that some of those things in bubbles um, are actually helping people understand things in science when they can't actually go to those planets and see what's happening. So it's helping them figure out things with math in a different way, too. That's Cool. So, um, Gabe and Josh oh, said, go. "Oh, it popped." <laughs> oh, no, Sorry no, to burst your bubble. Uh -huh. No, I took the, it took the picture late, so it popped. Uh, Zimmerman. Yes. So you know how there's a um, blue substance in the cup? It's it's the same thing as the one in the container, right? Yes. I'll show you what we did. We just used this kind of dish soap and we got it from the dollar store when I read different articles and I posted some of those links for you in that wakelet about bubbles. It said Dawn dish soap has been tested and it seems like it's the one that helps oh, the bubbles the last the longest. And the other container next to it is glycerin. This is Mixing glycerin with dish soap and some water yeah. makes the bubbles last okay. longer and stay stronger. Um, I got the glycerin from Amazon and they yeah. delivered it to my house. They have little it's tiny containers, but I got a big bubble. container for the school just because I, I knew we were going to do a lot of bubble things. We've already gone this. through like four containers what of dish soap at a huge one, um, but we've done it for the whole school and brought those things outside with the big bubble wands. Um, like I said, I'm going to extend the due date for this yeah. and I yeah, might I even it. push it back till when next week to make sure everyone has the time that they want to either practice or try different formats. If you want to get anything that's delivered to you, if you're remote, you can do that. Here are some things that we got. Um, so this one, I found, oh, it's over here, the camera, this bubble wand. It's like in a long tube and it has the bubble wand inside of it. That's a long slit, um, but it makes pretty big bubbles. And they oh, have, yeah, this, I have one of them. You've got one. So you can even fill your own um, solution inside of it once it, it empties out. Oh, hold on. I'm going to come over here because Mr. Morris is talking about some things that I want you to hear. Okay. So he's talking about bubbles in the space station. I wanted you guys to hear. Yeah, the question is, if you blew a bubble, you're an astronaut, and you blew a bubble on the space station, if it didn't ever hit anything, if it was just floating around, would the bubble pop? Because right here, if you make a bubble, eventually, it'll pop. What do you all think at home? Um, I don't know. So when you make a bubble, first of all, there's a terminology, a scientific terminology we call water tension. Water tension is the ability for the molecules in water to adhere to one another. That's why we can make a bubble because the water tension is so great that it'll contain the air inside it. If we put glycerin or some other mechanism to thicken up that and to enhance that water tension, it'll last longer. That's why we did these. We put glycerin in them, and it and it creates a stronger water tension bond so that it'll last longer. But gravity here on Earth will eventually pull all the molecules down to the very bottom. And eventually, it gets so thin, there's no longer cohesion between the molecules of the water, and that water tension will release, and the bubble will pop. So with that in mind, let me ask you again. If you're on the space station, will the bubble pop if it never touches anything? No. Yeah. Why? No, because, because there's no gravity in space. Okay, and what is gravity doing to the bubble here on Earth? Calling it. And all the molecules down, right? Yeah. And it's getting really, really thin on the top. And eventually that thinness won't have the, heat, the cohesion to be able to hold it together. But in the space station, if there's no gravity, you'll have the same cohesion entirely around the entire bubble. And I mean, it won't last for eternity, but it's going to last for a really long time. I mean, mo air molecules and everything are attacking it. 
hitting it and it may bump into something. But it's going to last for a really, 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 really long time. It's kind of like if you've ever seen astronauts uh, squirt water out. They make perfectly round globs, circular bubbles. Or not bubbles, but globs of water because of the water tension. It's perfectly round. One of the really cool things in space is that they're trying manufacturing because because there's no gravity or microgravity, you can create things that are just perfectly spherical that we can't do on Earth or are difficult to do. So um, anyways, there's your questions. And to find out what's creating all these cool colors in the bubble. What is making it do that? What's, the, what's translating white light into all these amazing colors that we see here? And what colors? Why only certain colors? Because you only see certain colors in here. Um, I mean, it's going to be the color of the rainbow. One of the fascinating colors that you won't see in a rainbow. Can you think of any colors that you don't ever see in a rainbow? Black. Black's not really a color. White. White's not a color, and black's not. Um, a color. There's like absence of reflections of. I mean, there's no color, it's not brown. There's no what? Brown. Brown? That's a great answer. There's no brown. <laughs> there's, you're not going to ever see brown. Um, there's, a, there's some other colors similar um, to that. that you couple ask see? about gray. They said they don't remember seeing gray in there. Gray is a, is a transition between black and white. So in the world of color, Black is the absence of all light. Color is a presence of all light. But it's not it's not specific color. So you have all the colors in white, none of the colors in black. And so a color is is a, is a derivation of that. You're breaking apart that light, and there's different colors that light creates. And there's some basic ones. Uh, our eyes only three see three colors. Our eyes are created when we see red, green, and blue. And by God's miraculous creation, we can see everything. But it's pretty cool. Our, we only literally only can see three colors, red, green, and blue. That's pretty amazing. Um, someone asked about pink. Does pink count as a color that you can see in the rainbow? Now, what was that again? Pink. Isabel asked about pink. Pink is, you could probably pull off a pink, if, depending on what you call pink. I mean, there's some ones, there's some color. kind of here. magenta. There's a magenta color. Which would be kind of a pink color. Um, and then on the, the Wakelet collection link that I just posted again in this chat, the bottom edge of that central focus bubble has kind of a pink hint to it. In terms of rainbows, um, I know when you look at a direct rainbow outside, it doesn't necessarily look like a pastel pink, but it's more of like that mix between the blues and reds, purpley, yeah. magenta colors. And pink, in in technical terms, pink is a variation of red. So you'll see a variation of red in there. And if you push red, the saturation level of red to the full extreme, it's super red. You cut down the saturation level and you're going to get less and less and less actual pink until it becomes white so somewhere between white and dark red you're going to get a pink color as you change the saturation level thank you mr morris and then what i'm going to do now for all of you who are on the call gabe said that he's ready to share his sway so that you can see the setup that he did that doesn't require this extensive amount of equipment like that <laughs> They looked up on one of the videos. So in, again, in that bubble collection that I gave you, there are videos that show how to make one of those light boxes um, with cardboard. And so he has his screen shared right now. I'm going to turn my camera off, but I'll want you to show one more time so you can see the comparison of what this setup is so that you've got a solid dark background and then light that goes overhead of where the bubble is and then a camera stable for you. So I'm going to let Gabe take over now. Can you turn on your audio and talk them through this, please, Gabe? Yeah, OK. So I'll scroll back up to the top this way here. Um, so first off, my name is Gabe. I'm a 10th grader here. And um, I originally found this idea of shooting uh, 
photos of bubbles in a centralized area um, from the internet. And then I tried it out and it turned out pretty well on my first try. Granted, I threw together just a bunch of um, boxes and parchment paper and a flashlight and that was my first try. But um, after that, I showed a friend of mine, Josh, he's also a 10th grader here, uh, what I did and he thought it was pretty cool. So um, we tried it again for a second time, a third time, and a fourth time. And the first time, I just used uh, just a little bit of just like water and soap, like dish soap, and I threw together this box, if it will play for me here. I used this sort of Kirkland brand uh, soap, and this is the box, and I would have a bubble right here. And it ended up turning out like this here couple of simple uh, bubbles here. I'll just go through a couple of these. And then the second try with Josh, we ended up with this. We did basically the same sort of setup like I did at my house, except we did this at school. And uh, granted, we did use our own phones. And so that kind of turned out to uh, degrade the quality of the photo, but we were still able to get some pretty cool colorizations here. And on to our third version, that uh, this was actually our second version of level photography. Um, it's just like just a box and tape. And this is our third version. We were able to put together a well-designed box and the bubbles turned out a lot better than uh, we thought they would on version three. I'll go through just a couple of these here. So in this uh, third version, we actually had the help of Brian Morris, as you guys heard him talk a couple of minutes ago. He was able to provide us with a bunch of tips and um, a bunch of different tricks that we could use to actually diffuse the light properly. That way we could get a better color in the bubble. And so it doesn't look like it, but this is a much better version than what we had originally. And we had two different layers of light diffusing paper, and that definitely helped a lot with the new colorization. And last thing that we noticed is that there's a sort of color change that happens as the bubble's life starts and ends. It starts out with like a pastel color of like green and like purple and a little bit of orange, as you can see here at the beginning of the bubble. And then as you go on, it starts to turn a little bit brighter. And then you get just brighter colors, less pastel, more colorful, more lively i guess you could call it and then it starts to turn like a whiter color and then you might end up getting like purple or blue like we did and then it'll turn white and that's when you know it's about to pop so yeah and i got my inspiration from this video here I watched it a couple weeks ago and i thought it was the coolest thing ever but yeah that that's my whole that's my whole thing Okay, so people who are remote, Gabe said he just finished his. Hi, Ashley, you have a question? Go camera. No. no question? Okay. Do you have any other questions for Mr. Morris while he's here? I'll show you those one more time so you can see some of those amazing photos. And I'll get these all posted up so you guys can take a look at them. So people at home, I would like you to click on that Wakelet link again and make sure that you get a chance to review the content that's in there. I'll push that photo bubble assignment back. Like I said, the weather just cleared, so I want to make sure that you had clear 
air. Okay, here's a really nice big bubble. I have to just kind of burst that bubble um, so that you'll have time to do that. I want you to be able to have a chance to look at whether it is portrait photography or you're doing up close single bubbles, if you're doing the colors, if you're doing something else. But remember that your goal is to tell a story with it. Like what effect do you want it to have? How did you talk about that with emotions? I want them to pick a title for what they're trying to capture with. Yes. Well, the, if you're, I mean, there's, as you're looking at these, you take it out from the science part of it, and you just look at the colors and the swirling colors and everything on there, and the magnificent structure of these bubbles. It's, it, it, in me, it invokes a sense of awe. It's just incredible of what I can capture from ordinary light. And there's a lot of a lot of poetry and emotion in the swirling colors and what you see on the this fragile, 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 like life. Your life is so fragile. Your life is in the in the timeline of the cosmos. We're like a bubble. So, how does your life reflect the light in the short amount of time that we have here on this earth? What kind of light are you reflecting that to the people around you? And we also had some people who were in person who decided, and a couple of remote people who decided that they wanted to do other types of bubbles that showed up on that bubble documentary, like with glitter being lifted up by bubbles. Some people wanted to do reactions with baking soda and vinegar type of bubbles. Um, some wanted to do fizzy bubbles in drinks to capture some of those. So you have options of the types of bubbles but ultimately you're telling a story of those. Any other questions for me? Okay, we can end this call now. This is recorded, so if you want to go back and look at any part of it, you can. Remember to use that Wakelet link. There's a section that talks about what makes bubbles different colors, and then there's a collection inside the collection that talks about photography. Talk to you all later. Bye. So we're just about like Bye. The amazing thing is